charcoal briquettes. Disposal of waste is normally looked upon as a problem, but it need not be so. Waste can be a source of high-grade fuel. For instance, dry combustible waste can be processed into charcoal by a procedure developed by appropriate rural technology institute. By using this procedure, one can produce charcoal from agricultural waste, dry leaves, sugarcane trash, dry grass, bamboo waste, tendu leaves waste generated during bidi making, paper, cardboard and other similar substances. It not only generates income for the individual but it also benefits the environment by saving the forests and by replacing fossil fuel. For charring the biomass, we need a handy kiln like this. It consists of a 200 liter steel barrel which serves as a biomass pyrolyzer and a lid and a chimney that fit on top of the barrel. All the parts are provided with handles like this to make manual handling easy. In addition, one also needs a container with a tightly fitting lid for storing the charcoal produced in the course of the day. The biomass is charred in the pyrolyzer. The air needed for this process is supplied through a set of 13 holes punched into the bottom of the pyrolyzer and 12 holes along its sides. The kiln is portable. It is carried to the site where biomass is available. During operation, the kiln is kept on three bricks or stones like this. The biomass is filled into the pyrolyzer like this because the process of charring needs a steady supply of air. The biomass should not be packed tightly. The recommended weight of paper or cardboard should be about 5 kilograms. Sugarcane trash or dry leaves should not weigh more than 6 kilograms. Whereas, stalks of cotton or pigeon pea may not weigh more than 12 kilograms. After filling the pyrolyzer with the biomass, sweep away the remnants fallen on the ground around the pyrolyzer. Ignite the biomass like this from the top and after it has caught fire, place the lid on the barrel and also place the chimney on the lid. Water may be sprinkled around the kiln. Grass leafy biomass and cardboard take about 15 minutes to char. Whereas, stalks of cotton or pigeon pea take around 20 minutes. After the requisite period of time, open the lid of the kiln and stir the material into the kiln with a stick to check if it has been evenly charred. Wear thick hand gloves and a mask during this operation. Sprinkle water like this on the biomass to extinguish the fire. One can also use a plunger like this for putting out the fire. The charcoal yield is generally 30% of the dry weight of the biomass. In the case of grass, leaves or paper, the charcoal is powdery. Whereas in the case of stalks of cotton or pigeon pea, it retains the original shape of the stalks. Fill the charred material into another container provided with a tightly fitting lid. If the char has not been wetted or if the lid of the char container is not sufficiently tight, the char may catch fire again. Make cylindrical briquettes or tablets like this by mixing the char with starch paste as binder. The briquettes are made by using a machine called an extruder and the tablets are made with the help of a mold. Flow fallen on the floor of the flow mill is an excellent low-cost source of starch. Use 1 kilogram of flour for 10 kilograms of char. 
Boil the flour in water to make starch paste and mix it thoroughly with the char. This mixture is then passed through an extruder to make briquettes. One can use any one of the following three types of extruders. Manual extruder. This is a small, low capacity machine for producing char briquettes on a household scale. It is fixed to a wooden board or a table for stability. The char and the starch mixture is introduced into the machine like this and when the handle is cranked, the char is extruded in the shape of cylindrical briquettes like this. This machine can deliver briquettes at the rate of about 10 to 12 kilograms per 8 hour shift. Small electrically operated extruder. This is a slightly larger extruder fitted with an electric motor of 1 horsepower. It can produce about 50 kilograms briquettes in an 8 hour shift. It is useful for small enterprises. Large commercial extruder. This is a large machine requiring 3.5 horsepower to run it. It produces about 24 kilograms briquettes per hour. This machine can be fitted with an electric motor or with a diesel or a petrol engine. Such engines can also use biogas as fuel. The briquettes are laid out in the sun like this for drying. The dried briquettes are weighed and packed in plastic bags for sale. One can also make round or oblong tablets like this by using a mold. If the raw material is abundantly available for making charcoal, one can even use 5 or 6 kilns simultaneously at the same site. Sarai Cooking System the Sarai cooking system developed by Appropriate Rural Technology Institute, RT, has become quite popular in a relatively short time. This device saves the expenditure on cooking fuel because it uses only 100 gram charcoal for cooking a meal. The Sarai system consists of a charcoal brazier, an outer cylindrical jacket, a steam vessel, three food containers and a sling that holds the food containers. All the components are made of stainless steel. This system is available in three sizes. The smallest one, having a capacity of five liters, is meant for one or two persons. The medium size, having a capacity of eight liters, is meant for a family of four to five persons whereas the large one having a capacity of 12 liters is meant for larger families having eight to ten members before starting the process of cooking place a single layer of charcoal into the brazier ignite the charcoal with the help of a strip of waxed paper the waxed strips are made by soaking paper strips in molten candle wax the waxed strip is lit and inserted into this hole in the brazier below the charcoal. The three food containers carry three different items of food such as pulses, beans and vegetables along with the requisite amount of water. Pulses are placed in the lowermost container because they are the hardest to cook. Oil salt and spices may be added to the vegetables. This larger container is the steam vessel. Pour about one and a half cup full of water into it. Hot water is preferable to cold water. Place the three food holders into the steam vessel. Close the steam vessel with its lid and place the entire assembly into the outer jacket. Place the outer jacket on the lighted brazier like this. 
cooking the food takes about 50 minutes in this system. If the steam vessel is not opened, the food remains warm even up to 2 to 3 hours. The ash left in the brazier can be used either for cleaning pots and pans or as a fertilizer in the case of house plants. Advantages of using the Sarai cooking system It reduces the expenditure on cooking fuel. In villages, the charcoal left in a wood-burning stove can also be used in the Sarai system. Because the food is cooked slowly at low temperature, the nutritional value and taste of food are improved. Because there is no buildup of pressure inside the steam container, Sarai system is totally free from the danger of the safety valve, gasket or lid being blown off. There is no need for the housewife to tend to the system while the food is being cooked. One can carry and use this system while traveling. It is very convenient to cook special diets of the elderly and the sick. It can be used for cooking meals and seafood. Many other items of food such as idli, khaman dhokla or even cakes can be made in this system. One can also use it for cooking maize cobs and groundnut pods. Because the char briquettes are made without cutting trees, they represent an environment-friendly fuel. Because the briquettes burn cleanly, without smoke or soot, the atmosphere in the kitchen remains pollution-free and the kitchen remains clean. The system can be used in huts, bungalows, and also in apartment houses. This system has become very popular among housewives. In the rural areas, it is sold through stalls in local exhibitions and fairs and also through women's self-help groups. For developing the process of making charcoal from agricultural waste, our institute, RT, received the Ashden Award for the year 2002.